Let's start with the next chapter today. Class 12, Surface Chemistry. Okay. Now, when you are looking at the heading over here, Surface Chemistry, what does that imply? Surface Chemistry means that over here we are going to study certain surface phenomena. So anything what is happening at the surface of the solid or the liquid or the gas. Okay. So, we know that the solids, they have the most well-defined surfaces. Right? Liquid surface is not very well defined and gases they do not have a surface which can be easily defined. So in gases we say that they do not have well defined surfaces at all. When we are talking of a surface phenomenon over here, we say we are going to discuss a term which is known as adsorption. Okay. What is adsorption? It is the tendency of accumulation, tendency of accumulation of molecules or molecular species at the surface. Okay. At the surface of a solid or a liquid. Most commonly we are going to discuss over here solids. On the surface of solids that is known as adsorption. Why only solids we are saying? As I just said that the solids they have the most well defined surface. Therefore we study mostly adsorption as a part of solids. Okay. Now what do we understand by this what we have written over here? Tendency of accumulation of molecular species only at the surface, right? As for example, uh, if you throw a pebble in water, okay? When you take out that pebble, what do you see? That the surface of the pebble that is wet, right? But if you try to break that pebble from inside, it is going to be dry. So it means the water molecules, they have accumulated only on the surface of that pebble and that process that is known as what? It is known as adsorption, right? In adsorption, we are going to study two terms further. The first one that is adsorbate. Adsorbate. What is adsorbate? It is the molecular species which is getting adsorbed. It is the molecular species which is getting adsorbed or which is getting accumulated on the surface. And the second one is adsorbent. What is adsorbent? Adsorbent over here is the surface on which the process of adsorption that is taking place. Okay, so generally what are we saying over here that adsorption is a surface phenomenon. Okay, and the solids which have the surface of the adsorbent which we are taking as solid over here, all the solids which have a uh, you can say finely divided structure or an activated structure. Finely divided structure means that we are uh, granulating it converting it into smaller parts such that the surface area that increases as a result of which adsorption also increases. Okay? And other term which we are going to keep using over here is activation. Activation or activated complex or activated solid surface means that we are heating at heating any surface at a very high temperature such as to get some pores on the surface. Okay? So that is what two words which we are going to use over here. One is activated and the other one that is finely divided. Right? Adsorption of gases specifically when we are talking of adsorption of gases on Metal surface Right? Then this term is known as occlusion This term that is known as occlusion Okay, occlusion means what? 
when the adsorption of gases takes place on the metal surface for example adsorption of hydrogen over palladium right hydrogen over platinum or hydrogen over nickel so all these they are examples of occlusion when we taking of talking of adsorption over here let's understand adsorption with the help of the following examples okay the first example is let's say we have taken a beaker that beaker has a few gases like ch4 o2 and n2 okay this is a beaker having the, these gases it's, it's a closed beaker now when we are only taking the gases over here let's say the pressure exerted by all the gases that is equal to p then after that what we do is we draw a piece of charcoal inside the speaker and then we again measure the pressure over here let's say that the pressure that is equal to p1 we observe that the pressure p1 that is less than p why this is happening this is happening because the surface of charcoal that has adsorbed these gases as a result of which the free gases in the container they decrease as a result of which the pressure also decreases okay another example which we can take over here we are taking raw sugar cane juice from which we are preparing sugar okay now this raw sugar cane juice it is slightly yellow in color it is slightly yellow in color if we place a piece of animal charcoal in this we see that the yellow color of the sugar cane juice that disappears which means that the animal charcoal that has adsorbed the color from sugar cane theek hai clear ho gaya in a similar manner if we are taking silica gel if we are taking silica gel silica gel is small granules of silicon or silica theek hai if we are taking these we see that the air surrounding this silica gel that becomes dry air surrounding the silica gel that becomes dry now this dryness of air is because of what it is because that the silica gel that has adsorbed the water molecules on its surface okay so these are a few examples of adsorption now if we are trying to remove the adsorbate from adsorbent then a reverse process that is going to take place which is known as desorption so what is desorption it is a reverse of adsorption theek hai it is going to be reverse of adsorption reverse of adsorption means what that when the adsorbate leaves the surface of the adsorbent then a reverse process of adsorption is going to take place that is known as desorption so what all have we learned in this section we have learned what adsorption is okay adsorption is a surface phenomena in which all the molecular species they accumulate on the surface then we learn adsorbate adsorbate is the molecular species which are getting adsorbed adsorbent is the surface on which adsorption is taking place then adsorption of gases on metal that is known as occlusion and desorption that is the reverse of adsorption then we learn another word over here which is adsorption now what is adsorption adsorption is a bulk phenomena for example it is a bulk phenomena for example if we have taken sponge right and sponge we are 
we put it in water what is going to happen that sponge that is going to absorb the entire water which means the concentration of water is similar on the surface as it is inside the bulb or we can say that the absorption that is a uniform phenomenon okay the absorbed species is uniform throughout the surface and inside it is uniform okay so that is what is absorption now if we try to do the distinction between adsorption and absorption let's see what are the differences so let's just draw down the differences between adsorption and and adsorption okay adsorption in this the concentration the concentration of molecular species is more on the surface is more on the surface than in the bulk okay which means that the molecular species they do not penetrate inside the bulk they will only remain in the surface whereas in absorption the molecular species are uniformly distributed they are uniformly distributed in the entire surface surface and bulk both theek hai it is uniformly distributed on the in the solid or in the liquid that is what adsorption is then number 2 we say that adsorption is a surface phenomena whereas adsorption is a bulk phenomena another difference the third difference is that adsorption is rapid in the beginning as soon as we will uh, put the charcoal in a mixture of gases immediately it will start absorbing so it is rapid in the beginning and slows down with time theek hai it slows down with time adsorption jo hai that occurs at uniform rate that is going to occur at a uniform rate so these are the differences between adsorption and adsorption sometimes what happens both adsorption and adsorption they start taking place simultaneously such a process that is known as sorption okay so what is sorption when both adsorption plus adsorption take place simultaneously that is adsorption like for example if we dip a piece of chalk in ink and we take it out we will see that the ink that is absorbed on the surface of the chalk the chalk becomes blue but when you break the chalk we see that the chalk is wet from inside but there is no ink marks which can be seen inside the chalk right so that is the process of sorption in which adsorption and absorption both they are taking place simultaneously okay now let's understand why adsorption is taking place mechanism of adsorption what is the mechanism of adsorption now in case of adsorption we say that the surface molecules 
they are in a different state from the molecules which are present inside the bulk. Okay, basically we have two kinds of molecules. One which is the surface molecules and the other ones which are what? Which are the bulk molecules. So both these surface molecules and bulk molecules, they are in a different state. Why? Because we know that when we are talking of the bulk molecules, the bulk molecules will be attracted by the other molecules surrounding it with exact or with the same force. Like for example, if we are taking a beaker and we are seeing a molecule which is present in the center, this molecule that will be attracted equally by all the molecules which are on all the sides of this molecule. Whereas when we are talking of the surface molecule, surface molecule will only be attracted towards its side. Right? So the types of molecules or the state of molecules that is different on the surface than in the bulk. Then second, particles of the, as I just told you over here, that particles of the surface molecule, they experience a residual attractive force. And that attractive force that is going to be inward, okay? As we are showing over here in this molecule, that that attractive force that is going to be inside. Then, as a result of this, what is going to happen? Because this molecule is being attracted inside, it is going to attract the adsorbate molecules. Because the resulting force is an attractive force, as a result of this, the adsorbate molecules are attracted on the surface. The adsorbate molecules, they are attracted on the surface because of these uh, residual attractive forces. Now, extent of adsorption will keep on increasing. As we have written over here, it is rapid in the beginning and slow down with time. So we say that as the uh, adsorption molecules, they are coming in contact with the surface, the process of adsorption will keep on increasing till when? Till the entire surface that is covered. Okay, so as the surface is covered, with time, the extent of adsorption keeps on decreasing. Extent of adsorption that can be written as x by m, where x is the amount adsorbed and m is the mass of the surface on which adsorption is taking place. So we say that as the surface is covered with time, the extent of adsorption keeps on decreasing. Okay? So this is the third point. Then the fourth point is that whenever adsorption is taking place, Whenever adsorption taking, is taking place, there is decrease in residual forces. Why a decrease in residual forces? Because the surface would be covered, right? The forces which are attracting the adsorbate molecules towards inside, that is also being covered. So, they keep on decreasing with time. Okay, so this is one important point over here. So we say that whenever adsorption is going to take place, there is going to be decrease in surface energy. These are the conceptual questions which you can get. There is a decrease in surface energy because the forces of attraction they are decreasing. Therefore, the surface energy also is going to decrease and this energy which is decreasing over here that is going to be released in the form of heat. So from here we can say that surface, this thing, the process of adsorption that is exothermic in nature. Isn't it? So what can we say from here? That the process of adsorption That is
exothermic in nature. Right? Now, because it is exothermic, then one thing we know that whenever the process is exothermic, delta H that is going to be always negative. For exothermic processes, delta H is negative. So when the second thing is, if we are absorbing a gas on the solid surface, then whenever a gas is absorbed, what is going to happen? That the randomness of the gas will decrease because it is getting absorbed. Whenever a gas is absorbed, we say that randomness decreases or in other words, we can say that the entropy change that becomes negative. Whenever degree of randomness decreases, delta S that is going to become what? It is going to become negative. Now for any reaction to take place, we know that according to thermodynamics, delta G should be negative for any spontaneous process. Helmholtz equation which is given by delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Right? Now delta G will be negative when? When the value of delta H that should be negative. Isn't it? Because what are we saying over here? That delta S is negative. Negative and negative that will become positive. So the quantity T delta S over here that is going to be positive. Okay. So we say that delta G will be negative if delta H that is negative and the value of delta H is greater than the value of T delta S. Is it clear? Now as in when the gases that is getting absorbed on the surface, what is going to happen? The surface is going to be covered, right? As a result of which the value of delta H will keep on becoming less and less negative. And if the value of delta H will keep on becoming less and less negative, the value of delta G will also become less negative. Okay? And hence the extent of absorption that will keep on decreasing with time. Is it clear? Okay, so what are we saying over here? That with time, delta H becomes less and less negative. And the time will come when delta H that becomes equal to zero. So if delta H become equal to zero, then what will happen? Or we can say that instead of zero, let's say that the value of delta H that becomes equal to T delta S. Okay. So if the value of delta H becomes equal to T delta S, the value of delta G will become equal to zero. Okay. So we say that at this point, Delta G that becomes equal to zero at this point that is known as equilibrium. When the rate of forward reaction becomes equal to rate of backward reaction. So that is going to be delta G when becomes equal to zero. So the amount of gas absorbed or we say that the extent of absorption that is equal to desorption. Jitti gas absorb hogi, utni hi gas jo hai that is going to leave the surface. So this is the theory of absorption. So let's see once again what are we saying in mechanism of absorption mein. We say that there are two types of molecules which are present. One is the surface molecule and the other one is the bulk molecules. Both the molecules they are in different states. Okay. We say that the center molecule that is experiencing a force which is equal from all sides Whereas the surface molecule it is getting or it is experiencing an inward pull. So because of that there are certain residual forces which are 
uh, formed over here and these residual forces they are going to be attractive in nature. Because of the attraction of these molecules, they can easily attract the gas molecules on its surface, right? So that is known as what? Adsorption. As and when the time keeps on, uh, uh, as and when the time is being covered, we say that the surface of the solid will also be covered. So if the surface is covered, the extent of adsorption that keeps on decreasing with time. Okay? Or there is going to be a decrease in residual forces and hence there is going to be decrease in surface energy. This decrease in surface energy that is given out in the form of heat as a result of which the process is exothermic and delta H that is going to be negative. Okay? Now if delta H is negative and we say that when the gases are getting absorbed, delta S is also negative. Right? The reaction can only be spontaneous if delta G is negative and it is given by delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now the value of delta H is negative over here but the value of delta S at the same time is also negative. So we say that delta G will be negative only if the value of delta H is greater than T delta S. Okay, so with time delta H that will keep on becoming less and less negative and the time comes when delta H becomes equal to T delta S therefore delta G becomes zero and a state of equilibrium that is attained. So this is what this from this section we can tend to get a conceptual question. Is it clear? Okay, then next we go on to types of adsorption. So next is types of adsorption. We are going to do two types of adsorption. The first type of adsorption that is known as physical adsorption. Okay. What is physical adsorption? It is simply the accumulation of the gases on the surface of the solids by weak Vandermeer forces of attraction. So the adsorbate gets accumulated on the adsorbent. How? By weak Vandermeer's forces. Okay, so these are temporary attractions which are taking place in case of physical adsorption. When we are looking at the characteristics of physical adsorption, this is the first characteristic. Then number two we say that the physical adsorption does not have any specificity. Or in other words, we can say that there is lack of There is lack of specificity in case of physical adsorption, right? So there is no stronger attraction for any kind of gas. It is not that that if we are talking of nickel or we are talking of palladium, it is going to attract nitrogen with more attraction and it is going to attract oxygen with less attraction. This does not happen. Okay, so there is no specific, this thing here gas can be uh, you can say attracted towards one particular solid. Any gas can be absorbed on any surface. Right? Why? Because over here we are saying that the forces are universal. They are weak metamorphic forces of attraction. So we say that forces in case of physical adsorption, they are uniform. Okay? They are uniform or you can say that they are universal in nature. Then number three, in case of physical adsorption, the adsorption depends upon nature of the gas. Depends upon nature of the gas. Generally it is said that gases which are more easily liquefiable. Gases which are more easily liquefiable, they get absorbed faster. 
ठीक है दे गेट एब्जॉर्ब फास्टर वी नो दैट लिक्विफिकेशन ऑफ गैसेस दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन क्रिटिकल टेंपरेचर व्हाट इज क्रिटिकल टेंपरेचर टेंपरेचर अबव व्हिच अ गैस कैन नॉट बी लिक्विफाइड दैट इज व्हाट क्रिटिकल टेंपरेचर इज सो हायर द वैल्यू ऑफ क्रिटिकल टेंपरेचर मोर इजीली अ गैस इज लिक्विफाइड and more easily will it be absorbed theek hai more easily a gas is liquefied more easily it is absorbed and liquefaction of the gases that will depend upon critical temperature temperature above which a gas cannot be liquefied so uh, there are sulfur dioxide methane carbon dioxide they have higher values of critical temperature therefore they can be easily absorbed theek hai clear ho gaya okay fir uske baad next the physical absorption that is reversible in nature reversible in nature reversible in nature ka matlab kya hua ki when we have absorbed the gases on the surface of the absorbent they can be easily removed by changing the conditions of temperature and pressure for example if we increase the temperature we can reverse the process of absorption or if we decrease the pressure even then we can reverse the process of absorption that is desorption can easily take place in case of physical absorption theek hai so how can we reverse the process of absorption we can reverse the process of absorption either by increasing the temperature or by decreasing the pressure either by increasing the temperature or decreasing the pressure then number 5 extent of absorption over here increases with surface area as we increase the surface area the extent of absorption that increases why this happens because surface it's a surface phenomena so more the surface area of the absorbent more is going to be the forces of attraction or more is the area which is prone to absorption theek hai so with surface area so we generally what we do is keep to increase the surface area we either finally divide the metal powdered substance it has the maximum value of surface area so powdered substance substances or porous substances they are going to have more forces of attraction and hence more absorption clear so finally dividing the metal or by making the metal porous or making the absorbent porous we can increase the surface area and hence we can increase the extent of absorption then number 6 enthalpy of absorption is less what is enthalpy of absorption you can write down it is the amount of energy released amount of energy released when one mole of the absorbent one mole of the absorbent absorbs on absorbs on a given area of the absorbent given area of the absorbent so what are we saying over here that the enthalpy of absorption is low that is of the order of 20 to 40 kJ per mole why it is low it is low because of weak 
vendor balls forces right so these are the six characteristics of physical adsorption where the adsorbent that is getting adsorbed on the surface of the adsorbent by the vendor ball forces of attraction there is no specificity specificity easily liquefiable gases they are more easily adsorbed the process of physical adsorption that is reversible then increase in surface area that is going to increase the adsorption extent of adsorption and the enthalpy of adsorption that is low right so the second kind of adsorption which we are going to discuss that is a chemical adsorption chemical adsorption in case of chemical adsorption the forces of attraction are chemical bonds now in this case it is seen that the surface it has free valencies because of these free valencies the surface can easily attract the adsorbate towards itself as a result of which the temporary chemical bonds they are formed okay so that is what forces of attraction in case uh, in case of this they are chemical bonds the chemical adsorption is highly specific in nature highly specific why is it highly specific that is because the adsorption will only take place if there is any possibility of bond formation if there is any possibility of bond formation right now if the bonds they cannot be formed the process of chemical adsorption cannot take place that is the reason why it is highly specific okay the third nature of the gas only those gases which can form bonds only those gases which can form bonds with the surface only those will be adsorbed away okay physical may what did we do all those gases which are easily liquefiable they can be adsorbed but over here only those are adsorbed only those gases are adsorbed which have the ability to form bonds theek hai fir uske baad next the process of chemical adsorption it is irreversible we cannot reverse the process of chemical adsorption why again because of formation of bonds theek hai only because of formation of bonds then in case of when we talking of surface area over here surface area the chemical adsorption behaves in a similar manner has the same effect of surface area as that of physical adsorption so we say that it will increase increase in surface area the extent of adsorption that is going to increase extent of adsorption that increases theek hai and then last is heat of adsorption chemical adsorption has high heat of adsorption why high heat of adsorption that is because of what because of chemical forces which are present so the heat of adsorption is of the order of 42 400 kilojoules per mole the high heat of adsorption that is due to the chemical forces of attraction theek hai now we have written down the characteristics of both physical and chemical adsorption can you write down the points of differences between the two in the tabular form okay physical adsorption weak vendor ball forces of attraction whereas in chemical adsorption there are chemical bonds 
Number two, physical absorption, it is non-specific in nature, whereas chemical absorption is highly specific. Number three, the physical absorption is reversible, whereas the chemical absorption that is irreversible. Okay? And number four, the heat of absorption. In case of uh, physical absorption is very less, whereas heat of absorption in case of chemical absorption that is very very high. Okay? Clear ho gaya? Then we come to another term which is activation Activation of adsorption. What do we understand by activation of adsorption? Activation of adsorption means to increase the extent of adsorption. Methods to increase the extent of adsorption. How can we increase the extent of adsorption? It can be increased in many ways. Like for example, we can increase the activation of adsorption by uh, rubbing the surfaces together. So metallic surfaces are rubbed together. By rubbing what will happen is uh, the surface that will become uneven. It is not very smooth or in other words we can say that there is going to be the residual forces by making the surface uneven, it is going to increase. So metallic surfaces, they are rubbed together in order to make the surface activated towards adsorption. Okay? Then number two, it is increased by taking the adsorbent in the powdered state. Why in the powdered state? Because the surface area is maximum in the powdered state. So in both the cases, whether it is physical absorption or it is chemical absorption, we have studied that by increasing the surface area, we can increase the extent of absorption. Okay? Then number three, absorbing power can also be increased by heating the absorbent Okay?